Welcome to the Word Examined Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Wagner, intern pastor and true crime enthusiast. This season, we will continue to dive into the ultimate true crime story, the life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. This is a story you may have heard before, but I hope that with this telling, you can place yourself in the story and consider what it would have been like to shout Hosanna at the triumphal entry, share a meal at the Last Supper, or bear witness to one of the most brutal forms of murder in our history. I'm glad you're on this journey with me. Let's get started. Last time on the Word Examined podcast, we heard about Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples that ended in a betrayal. We continue this week with what follows. This week, we witness Jesus' arrest and his last moments spent with his disciples before his brutal murder. Last moments that are filled with chaos, violence, and confusion. An important note about this week's episode. This episode contains descriptions of suicide that some listeners may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. After Jesus and his disciples had left the room where they had shared their last meal together, Jesus led them into a garden, a place called Gethsemane. Jesus knew that his time was coming to an end, and to find comfort before the violence began, Jesus knew he needed to pray. When they all got to the garden, Jesus turned to them and said, Sit here while I pray, but don't fall asleep. So the disciples sat down. And Jesus went away from them to an area where he could pray on his own and reflect on the things to come. When Jesus was out of their sight, he fell to the ground in agony. He knelt and prayed, Father, all things are possible through you. If you are willing, take this cup from me, but it is your will that is done. Jesus knew that his time was coming, a time when things would finally become clear to his disciples a time when God's promises would be fulfilled in him. But this time would not be easy. In fact, it would be anything but. Jesus knew that this time would bring immense pain and suffering, so much so that Jesus began to pray more earnestly. He then got up and went to check on his disciples and was troubled by what he saw. They were all asleep! He was so distressed that he yelled, Are you all asleep? Couldn't you stay awake for one minute while I prayed? They all woke up startled and looked up at their teacher and friend who was frustrated with them. Jesus told them again, Do not fall asleep, but pray that you don't fall into temptation. And again, Jesus left to go pray on his own. This time, Jesus was in more agony than before. He began to sweat as he prayed, filled with sorrow and anguish. He cried out to God once more, Father, your will be done. If this won't pass, then your will be done. He got up again to check on his disciples, and they had fallen asleep again. Jesus became more irritated with them and yelled louder, Wake up! Do not fall asleep, but stay vigilant. He left them for the third time to continue praying. Jesus' prayers became more and more urgent. He began to sweat, drops so big that they resembled drops of blood. When Jesus got up from prayer this time, he found the disciples had fallen asleep yet again. Jesus knew that a crowd was on its way to come and arrest him, so he said to the disciples, Get up. Let's get going. My betrayer will be here soon. We want to invite you to a very special worship service at Trinity Lutheran in Boyceville on April 3rd at 9 a.m. This will be our cross-generational worship service where we connect as a community to all generations in a time of sharing, worship, and fun. Come be a part of this unique worship experience on Sunday, April 3rd, at 9 a.m.
as the disciples began to rise from their slumber, an enormous crowd approached. As it got closer, they recognized the man leading the charge. It was Judas, the person that Jesus had told them would betray him. Their faces turned solemn as they knew what would happen when Judas came closer. There was tension in the air. Worry and fear began to spread quickly among the disciples. As the faces in the crowd became clearer, the disciples noticed how big the crowd truly was. Judas had betrayed Jesus all right. He was followed by both Roman and Jewish authorities who had come to arrest Jesus. Although Jesus knew that this was coming, his disciples were astonished that less than a week ago, they were seeing people praise Jesus in the streets of Jerusalem. Now, it seemed almost everyone had turned on Jesus. There seemed to be this collective effort people from all backgrounds ganging up on them to arrest their teacher and Lord. Jesus stepped forward toward the crowd. His disciples stepped forward with him, but he held them back. Who are you looking for? Jesus asked, knowing the answer. Those in the crowd replied, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas looked at Jesus, Jesus looked at Judas, and then back at the crowd. I am he. Peter was furious and needed to do something. This was Jesus. He couldn't just let them arrest Jesus for doing nothing wrong. Peter grabbed his sword and bounded in front of Jesus. He raised the sword in defense and in anger, and with a swift swing, cut off the right ear of the high priest's slave, a slave named Malchus. Peter raised his sword to swing again, but Jesus shouted, Put that sword away! No more of this! Peter, doing as Jesus said, put his sword down and looked at the damage that he had caused. He too had injured an innocent person. Peter looked at Malchus, bleeding profusely from his ear, grasping his head in pain. Peter's eyes traveled down toward the ground where the stump of an ear lay. The sword dropped to the ground. The soldiers in the crowd grabbed Jesus and began to take him away. This was the beginning of the end. The disciples ran away before they too were grabbed. One of the hired hands of the chief priest that was with the crowd, seeing that they had arrested Jesus, turned to Judas and handed him a bag of coins. Judas looked at the bag for a brief moment, then turned the opposite direction and ran. He didn't need to look in the bag because he knew there were 30 silver coins as payment for his deception and betrayal. As Jesus was led away, Peter followed at a distance, close enough to see what was happening, but far enough away from the crowd so he would not be arrested along with Jesus. Peter watched as they took Jesus to the high priest's house, the man called Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who had been instrumental in the events leading up to Jesus' arrest. He had been the one to make the deal with Judas. Peter came up upon a group that was sitting in the fire's glow in a small courtyard. He sat among them to rest. But as he did, a woman that was sitting among them looked up at him, and when they made eye contact, he could see that she recognized him. She said, "'You were with Jesus.' Peter immediately shook his head. No, I don't know him. Peter got up and left the courtyard. As he was walking, he ran into a couple of people coming toward him. When they saw him, they exclaimed, You were with that Jesus of Nazareth. Once again, Peter denied it. No, I don't know this Jesus you speak of. Peter's pace quickened as he passed them on the road. About an hour later, Peter had stopped and sat down on a bench. No one seemed to be around. But then seemingly out of nowhere, a man approached Peter and pointed his finger at him. You, you're one of them. Peter stood and shouted, I don't know him. At that moment, the rooster crowed, and Peter realized what he had done. Jesus had been right about him. Peter had denied being with Jesus, denied knowing him, denied being one of his disciples. Peter ran from the man and into a local stable, where he cried, filled with shame for what he had done. 
The chief priests and the scribes had spent the whole evening and into the wee hours of the morning questioning Jesus and trying to get him to admit to his blasphemy and illegal acts. But they grew more and more frustrated as their questions were met with more questions by Jesus, met with more silence. When they realized that they could only get so far with him, they bound him once again and led him away from the high priest's house to be taken to the governor, a man named Pontius Pilate, a man who would soon be an instrumental piece to our story. Meanwhile, Judas was in agony. He had deep regret for what he had done, and now everyone who looked at him looked at him with hatred. He tried to think of what he could do now. How could he relieve this guilt he felt? He suddenly knew what he had to do. He approached the temple where he would find the high priests and scribes and entered. He held up the bag of silver coins and said, Here, I have sinned. He is innocent. Take this. But they wouldn't take the silver coins back from Judas. The deed had already been done. They already had what they wanted. They laughed in his face and turned away. Judas knowing it was him who had sent Jesus to his death, threw down the bag of coins on the floor of the temple and ran. The chief priests that witnessed this picked up the bag of coins and the ones that had spilled. What do we do with this? We can't put this into the treasury. This is blood money. They discussed their dilemma and decided to buy a distant field that would become a place to bury foreigners. This field became known as the Field of Blood and is known as this to this very day. The day after Jesus' arrest, a man was walking toward the city and saw something on the right side of the path up ahead, near the entrance to the city. Thinking it was a branch that needed to be cleared out of the road, he kept walking. But as he came closer he saw that it was not a fallen branch. He knew this because what he saw was human, and it was swinging ever so slightly in the breeze. He thought he even recognized this man. Was this Simon Iscariot's son? Startled by the roar of a crowd up ahead, the man left Judas hanging in the tree, frightened by what was going on in the city. He had heard there was going to be a trial today, a trial for a man from Nazareth. Next week on the Word Examine podcast, we will continue the story as Jesus is put on trial and his fate is sealed by the hatred of a crowd that had once praised him. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Today's episode is sponsored by Levi's Tax Services. Got taxes you need to pay to the emperor? Come to Levi's Tax Services. Though we used to cheat you out of everything we possibly could, now we have turned over a new leaf. We are the most honest tax service place in town. Besides our tax services, we will even give you a free preview of the gospel we are writing about Jesus of Nazareth. Levi's Tax Services, the place you can trust to not cheat you out of your money. Stop over today. Thank you for listening. This podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Katie Wagner. The Word Examined Podcast, available on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.